If you're thinking, Cassie, this really doesn't look that good, I won't blame you, but it really isn't finished just yet, and just please bear with me until the end. I promise you it's going to look better than this. So basically what we're going to do now is I have this leaf that's in the background and I want to thread paint that on as well. So I'm going to put my masking tape on. I'm going to place my fabric may have to change the leaf somewhat because it's a little bit smaller than what I originally designed for and I'm going to put some masking tape at the top here so it doesn't move about on me <clears throat> apologize if I nudged the camera just then Then I'm going to turn my light box back on. All my Amazon links are in the description box down below. Um, disclaimer, I will get a small commission if you decide to purchase any of them. Um, I'm not sponsored or paid to create this video. So, I'm going to get my friction pen. And I want to... Just give myself a guideline of where I'm going to be thread painting. Now, I need to continue this on till about down here. So I'm going to continue it on. I'll push that up so you guys can see. And then I'm just going to copy all of my leaves. So I don't even need to do that centre bit. If you're looking at doing um, any kind of free motion quilting and you're not very confident with doing your free motion quilting, this is a great way to um, get into it because you're just following all of your lines. I'm going to put this one here. If anybody has any questions or comments, please look in the description box down below. It doesn't really matter if you go outside the line, you're just trying to get the image on, basically. So if you're not really good artist, then you can copy what you've done on your piece of paper. And I'm going to have to continue it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this light box on so I can off, so I can see where I still need to go. And I still need to go a bit lower down here. So I'm just going to do the same sort of premise as what I've just done. These friction pens are raised out. So you don't need to worry about that. There you go, there's your basic outlines. Oh, I'm missing some here. And there we go. We are ready to do our free motion quilting. I use Glide Black Thread. 
in the top of my thread. Um, I use this because I just like the look of it. And also I will use bobbin thread. I will use black bobbin thread, not white, um, right here. So I'm going to put a black bobbin thread in my sewing machine. And I'm also going to have to use a thread stand because this is a bigger cone of thread that I will then again attach to my sewing machine. This is my big box of Prono. Once again, I'm not paid nor sponsored to create this video. I have in the needle a 9014 Microtex needle. I have the open toe free motion quilting foot on my sewing machine. And I'm going to do the setting for free motion on. Just scroll through. It's off and it's now on. So I'm going to press OK. Prepare your fabric as you would do as a quilt. So you have the top section, you have your batting section and a batting. So now I'm not going to talk that much. I'm just going to let you guys watch. You'll probably notice here that I did a lot of jump stitches and that was because I didn't want to stop and start on my sewing machine. So I'll have to go through and just unclip them all off now. This is where some actual embroidery scissors come in handy. They lay flat on the fabric and they're slightly bent. So you can get really in there and cut them bits away. Now I can start working on the stem. I 
and now I can start branching off get that point <laughs> get the pun and start doing all the leaves So what I'm going to do next is mount my work to a canvas. I'm going to use a heavy duty staple gun for this. Something like this does the job. I always like to staple the top first. Then from the top, you really want to stretch it out and pull it completely around the bottom and then staple the bottom. This is a lot of excess over here, so I'm going to cut some of this away. Then I just cut this section here and you just kind of mess with this corner until you get it absolutely how you want it to look. And then once it's tightly wrapped, really pull, you can go ahead and staple this into place again. Here is the finished piece. I hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial. I have over 500 sewing and quilting tutorials on my channel. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial.